In the lecture today, we will go through more fundamental joining skills in the AutoCAD design, including the coordination system, the layer, and some advanced joining aid tools. Let's first go through the coordination system in AutoCAD. We know that AutoCAD can draw some figures accurately, and this requires the help of coordinate system. With the coordinate system, the locations and the directions of objects can be placed accurately in one design. In AutoCAD, there are two types of the coordinate systems, water coordinate system and user coordinate system. The water coordinate system is used to define the global locations of all objects in the design. The system has only one origin, 0, 0 and it cannot be modified. Also, it uses x-axis to replace horizontal directions and the y-axis to define vertical direction. Besides the water coordinate system, we can also define our own coordinate systems. This is a user coordinate system. The user coordinate system can determine the default placement of our geometry in the joining. This indicates we can identify any point in the joining as the origin for the coordinate system. Also, we can change the rotation angle to revise the directions of x and the y axis. The user coordinate system is very helpful for us to simplify some complex design with irregular angles and the locations. In AutoCAD, we can draw both 2D and 3D objects so that there are two dimensional and three dimensional coordinate systems. For 2D coordinates, there are two types of definitions rectangular coordinates and uh, polar coordinates. As a rectangular coordinates, one point is defined as its distance to x-axis and y-axis. Also, you can use the absolute and the relative coordinates to define the point. With the absolute coordinate, you will always use the origin of the coordinate system to calculate the distance to x and y-axis. With the relative coordinates, you assume that the origin of the coordinate system moves from its default origin to the previous point that you just defined or operated. Then you can calculate the relative distance to x and y axis with that origin. Usually the relative coordinate system can simplify the calculation of the coordinates in your joining. The format of the absolute rectangular coordinate is x, y and the format of the relative coordinate is at x, y. At the polar coordinate system, one point is defined with its distance to the origin of the coordinate system, r, and the counterclockwise angle of the line connecting the origin and the point with respect to positive x-axis, theta. Also, there are absolute and relative polar coordinates which are similar to the definitions in the rectangular coordinate system. The format of the absolute polar coordinate is r smaller theta, and the format of the relative coordinate is at r smaller theta. In three-dimensional joining, there are three types of coordinate system. The first one is the rectangular coordinate system, and the picture here actually shows one example of the rectangular coordinate in three-dimensional space. You can find that the location of one point is defined by the distance of the point along the three axes, x, y, and z, similar to two-dimensional joining. We have the absolute coordinate, which uses the actual origin of the coordinate system, and the relative coordinate, which uses the previous point as the origin. The format of the absolute coordinate is x, y, z, and the format of the relative coordinate is at x, y, z. The second type is a spherical coordinate system. In this coordinate system, the location of one point is defined as its distance to the origin of the coordinate system r, its angle to z-axis theta, and the angle between the projected line and the positive x-axis phi. Also, it has absolute and relative coordinates. The format for the absolute coordinate is r smaller than theta smaller phi, and you can add the symbol at in the front to define the relative coordinate.
The last type is a cylindrical coordinate system. In this coordinate system, the location of one point is defined as the distance from the projected point to the origin of the coordinate system R, and the angle between the projected line and the positive x-axis phi, and the height of the point z. It also has both absolute and relative coordinates. The format for the absolute coordinate is r smaller phi comma z. And you also can add the symbol add in the front to define the relative coordinates. So these are the definitions of the coordinate systems in AutoCAD. Here I will show you how to use the coordinate system to draw figures accurately. In this example, we have the dimensions for all the line segments. And we will use those information to complete the drawing. Now I'm going to show you how to complete the figure with the coordinates. We will start from the corner here and draw all the lines clockwise. So the first thing you need to do is uh, call the line comment. You can either use the icon here or type the line under the command window. Now you will be asked to select the first point or the line segment. You can choose any point on the screen. And then let's go to draw the first line, the vertical line here with the length of 1.78. We will first use the relative rectangular coordinates. So here for that coordinate, you have to type at 0, 1.78. And that's the vertical line. And then let's draw the horizontal line with a length of 0.5. Type at negative 0.5, comma 0. We have the horizontal line to the left. And then we will use the relative polar coordinates to complete the next, next line segment. You type at 2.5 as the length of the line segment. And the angle would be 90 degree for the vertical line smaller 90 and then let's draw the horizontal line with the length of four units type at four smaller zero degree and that one gives you the horizontal line and then you, you can draw the sloping line we will use the relative rectangular coordinates type at 1.52 comma negative 1.52 and then get the sloping line and then for the vertical line downwards we are using the relative polar coordinates the length is uh, 0.56 so it's uh, at 0.56 smaller the angle is 270 degree for the direction downwards and then for the horizontal line, we have the length of 2.1 at 2.1 plus the angle is 180 degree. And we have the vertical line with the unit of 1 at 1 less than 270 degree downwards. And we have another horizontal line segment at 2.1 angle 0 and we have a vertical line we have the length of 1.2 at 1.2 less 270 degree and then we can connect the line back to the origin click and press enter to exit the line comment then you complete the whole figure AutoCAD also provides another function layer to simplify joinings. When the joining becomes visually complex, such as the room layer here, you probably want to hide the objects that you currently don't want to see or you don't want to modify during the joining. In that sense, we can introduce layers. A layer can be considered as a large piece of clear plastic on which a part of the whole joining is made so that you can oversee the other objects and you can insert or modify objects at the correct locations. At the same time, your operation will not affect the other objects at different layers. In the design of the room layout, you can split the design into cabinets, fixtures, electrical, doors, 
and floor plan and draw the same types of objects in one layer. In the next several slides, I will show you how to operate the layers in AutoCAD. First, to generate a new layer, you can type the command layer on the command window or go to the toolbar and find out the layer, layer property, and uh, then it will pop out a layer property window like the picture here. You can then add a new layer by clicking the new layer here. Then a new layer will be generated. You can then modify the name of the layer. And you also can add more layers by clicking this icon here. For each layer, you can set the properties of the lines that will be added to the layer, including their colors, width, and weight. For the color, you can just type the command color to modify the color for the lines. For the line width, type the line weight or air weight to change the values. For the line type, type line type to modify their values. You can also use the properties in the toolbar or type the command dd modify to change all those properties. AutoCAD also provides some advanced functions for you to control layers. If you have a design with multiple layers, you can go to the layer property window and switch different layers displayed on current screen. Also, all the layers you defined on your drawing can be deleted, except the current layer displayed on the screen and the layer 0, which is the base layer for all the drawings. These two layers cannot be deleted. And you can decide whether you want to open or close a layer. A closed layer will not be displayed on your drawing. Another advanced function is freezing. A freeze layer cannot be displayed, modified, or printed. Similarly, you can decide whether the layer will be locked or printed. A locked layer can be displayed on the screen, but it cannot be modified. Well, if you decide not to print one layer, then the layer will be locked for the printers and it cannot be printed. Now I'm going to show you how to operate layers in AutoCAD. This figure shows one room layout. It actually has a lot of layers. If you want to see the property of the layers, you need to open the layer property window. So you can either click the icon here, layer property, to activate that window, or you can type the command layer to activate that window. Now you will see that there are more than 10 layers which will define different components in this design. If you want to add one more layer, click the icon here, new layer, and then you will generate a new layer and you can define the name of the layer, set this one as floor, click enter, a new layer is generated. You can change the color, the type, and the weight of the lines added to that layer. If you don't want to keep the layer in your joining, you need to click delete layer icon here to remove that layer. And you will also see that there are three functions. The first one is on, which means you can decide whether you want to open or close a layer in your joining. And for example, if we go to the layer style, and if we turn off that layer, click here, they still will not be displayed on your screen. And you can click it again to open that layer. That's the function of on and off. For the second function, the freezing, you can decide whether you want to freeze one layer. And we know that a freezing layer will not be displayed, modified, or printed for your joining. So click this one you will also not see the layer on your joining right now. And the third one is a lock. If you decide to lock that layer, the objects on that layer will still be displayed on the screen, but you cannot modify any components in that layer. Here you see that all the lines are locked by this function. You cannot even 
uh, choose the objects there. If you unlock that layer, now you can select the objects and do some modification about the objects. Those are about the operation of the layers. AutoCAD also provides some useful joining tools to help users to complete the design efficiently. The first thing is the grid in the joining area. You can press F7 to open and close grids. Also, the spacing of the grids can be modified at the property window as the figure here. You can type DD setting, DS, SE, or DDR modes to activate the property window. In the next slides, I'm going to show you how to modify the property of the grid. Now I'm going to show you how to set the grids in AutoCAD. Here we already have the grids in the joining area. You can actually press F7 to deactivate the grids. And they also can go to the setting, type DS, and it will pop out in the draft setting window. And here you can uncheck this option to disable the grids. And if you want to display it again, type DS and check the option. Here you will see that we have the selections for the grid spacing. You can set the values for the spacing at the x-axis and the y-axis. For example, if I modify this one to 1, and uh, then the distance between two grid lines will be 1 unit. And you can also set the number of the cells between two major lines. The default value is 5, you can also modify those one to 10. Then the, uh, you will have less major lines displayed on your screen. So those are about the setting of the grids. Moreover, AutoCAD can provide object snap functions including 2D and 3D object snaps. The functions can be applied for users to capture some feature points of the objects, such as the midpoints, ends, tangent points, and so on. Each type of feature point will have a distinct symbol so that you can identify the points on the joining. Before you start one joining, I will suggest you to activate all feature points in the object snap so that you can find out the location of the points accurately. In the rest of this note, I will show one example for the implementation of the object snap. Moreover, in AutoCAD, we can activate orthogonal mode by pressing the function key F8. Once this function is activated, you can go to draw horizontal and vertical lines by typing their lengths directly in the modeling space. If we have a lot of horizontal and vertical lines in the design, activating the orthogonal mode can simplify your work dramatically. To complete the triangle here, we will use the object snap to find out the feature point and orthogonal mode to identify the top point of the triangle efficiently. Now I'm going to show you how to use the feature points to complete the triangle here. In this triangle, we can see that the lengths of these two sides are the same. This indicates if we draw a line to connect the top, top point and the midpoint of the baseline, the line will be perpendicular to the baseline. And we'll use this idea and the feature point, midpoint to complete the joining. So before we start the joining, we need to check whether the midpoint is activated or not. So you need to type the command ds to open the drafting setting window and then choose the object snap. Here we see that the midpoint is not selected. And as we mentioned earlier, it's better for us to select all the feature points before we start and joining. So here we select all. And remember, the midpoint is represented as a little triangle here. And then click OK. And now we can start the joining. So we will first use the line command and draw a horizontal line with the length of 80 units. So we are still using the uh, relative polar coordinates with the length of 80 and angle of 0 degree. And then you need to draw a vertical line start from the midpoint of this line segment. 
So we choose line comment and find out the middle point. You can go through the whole line segment. And once you see the little triangle, which means you will find out the midpoint. Click this one and draw a vertical line with a length of 30 units. So use the relative polar coordinates at 30, 90 degree. And this would be the top of the triangle. And then you can just use the line command to complete the rest of two lines. And then delete the assistant line. It will get the triangle. This is the way for you to use the uh, feature point to complete one figure accurately. The last tool we will learn is zooming and moving the screen of the joining. You can either screw your mouse up and down to zoom the joining in and out, or you can type the command zoom in the command window. The software will give you some options to change the scale of the screen, such as the real time or scale dynamic, and so on. Generally, you will use all to display all objects in the current screen. Then scale to define a scale respect to the default screen, and dynamic to change the scale dynamically. In order to move the screen, you can either use the little hand symbol in the toolbar on the right or type the command pen to activate the function. Then you can just left click your mouse and hold it to move the screen. In the next slides, I will show one example about the tools introduced in this lecture. In the last example, we will draw this figure with the help of the orthogonal mode coordinate system and feature points. Here I'm going to show you how to use all the skills we learned about to complete the example. The first thing is like if you find the figure is too small on the screen, you can zoom in or out for these figures to find out the appropriate scale. And then if you find out the location of the figure is not quite good, you can choose the icon here or you can type the command pen to generate a little hand on the screen and move the screen to find out the appropriate location for the figure. Then we can start joining the figure. We will start from this point and go through all the segments clockwise. And here you see that the first five line segments are either horizontal or vertical, so it's better for us to activate the orthogonal mode. To activate orthogonal mode, you need to press F8. Now the orthogonal mode is uh, activated, and then we are using the line command. Start at any point, and then you can draw a horizontal line by the cursor. And uh, here you just need to type the length of the line segment, 15 and then go downwards with the length of 5 units get the vertical line and go to right with length of 10 upward 5 right 15 and for the sloping line here we can use the relative rectangular coordinates and the value is negative 20 negative 30 so we can type the value at negative 20, comma, negative 30 to draw the sloping line. And for the baseline here, the length is 30 units. So we just uh, choose the length 30. And uh, for the last line segment, you need to deactivate the orthogonal mode. Press F8. And orthogonal mode is off. And then click back to the origin. Then you complete the whole journey. This is the way for you to use the orthogonal mode and the coordinates to complete one joining. This is the end of the third note. We have already completed all the fundamental knowledge about the AutoCAD. In the next lecture, we will go through the fundamental two-dimensional joinings.